How's in New York? Uh, this is Steven Kutsov and you're watching Rugby Wrap Up. For the Springboks, Steven Kutsov, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up next on Rugby Wrap Up, Major League Rugby with Dan Power and Brian Ray. And Free Jacks coach Josh Smith. Rugby Wrap Up brought to you in part by The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pub. And Lean and Limber, stretch your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy in Midtown Manhattan talking rugby, and we are talking Major League Rugby. We have a blockbuster show for you today, ladies and gentlemen, including the winning coach of the New England Free Jacks, Mr. Josh Smith, on the horn from Sin City, Viva Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada. Josh, welcome to the program. Thanks, Matt. Great to be here. Uh, Kudos on the hat. It's all part of my mea culpa, Coach. You know, eating crow, egg on my face, swallowing my pride, pounding down the humble pie, all of it. Yeah, yeah, it's much appreciated. You've uh, needled me plenty of times about Eli Manning and the Giants, so it's the hat is appreciated. We're not going to talk about Eli. We're not going to talk about Calvin Schiraldi. We won't do any of that stuff right now in this program because you guys, out of the gate, came out. They go through. On, on fire and crushed, really crushed, I hate to say it, Rugby United New York in Las Vegas. Yeah, we got, the boys had a great preseason, and um, I think the, the performance in week one said a lot to how the clubs come together in this short period of time. Um, you know, a couple, couple good bounces early on, get us, get us out rolling pretty well, and uh, straighten some things out at halftime, end up being a pretty good result for us. Good week one. Coach, if I'm doing stuff like this, right, you're not, like, stealing my signs, right? Because that's a Boston thing? (laughs) Uh, No comment. No comment. Beautiful. At least he's he's, he's noncommittal either way. Got to like that. No, but all seriousness, take a Waka on the wild side. How about about that guy? Yeah, Bo Slick, he's got got some great feet. Um, He kind of set the standard for us this weekend. Uh, he's a little, little bit banged up, but we, we're going to glue him back together, get him ready for Utah. But he's he, he's been quite a quite an addition to the club. All right. So in all seriousness, I, I have to salute you because you're one of two American coaches in the league. You and Scott Lawrence of Rugby ATL, both new franchises, rookies in the league, so to speak, and both teams won. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know. Scott's done some great stuff with life, and obviously with with uh, with rugby ATL is looking like it's going to be a lot of the same stuff there. Um, you know, we're we're just happy to we're we're using a lot of local staff members as well, uh, which is really trying to help help us engage our community up here in New England and the Boston area. Uh, but yeah, of course, it, it, it's very proud to be one of the only American coaches in the league. Yeah, good stuff. So, where are you guys hold up in Vegas? Are you on the Strip? No, we are. Uh, we're over at the Westgate. We're, we're staying in the Westgate for the full week. You, you, we've been able to use uh, – UNLV's let us use their facilities for the, for the boys, for the gym and the pool as well. That's cool. All right. So how did, how did Sam Boyd work out? <laughs> A little bit windy out there uh, on Saturday. Oh, God. Yeah, that was uh, – it was funny. The walkthrough, the walkthrough on Friday was beautiful. Nice weather. I can see the bit of sun, suntan I picked up. And then uh, Saturday, Jesus, the winds were – you know, the – almost impossible to, to, to play into it. Uh, we were lucky enough to have the win first and uh, we got, we got a couple good breaks with it and we used, used it to our advantage on, um, you know, that's part of the game adjusting to the elements. Hopefully we don't see that much wind again on, uh, on Saturday. Yeah. So you're, you're remaining in Las Vegas. It's going to be new England versus Utah in Las Vegas, only in rugby, right? Oh, right, oh, right, only in rugby. Uh, the, you're right. And the trivia question of where were the Free Jacks in New York's first match ever will be in Las Vegas. That'll be a nice trick question for somebody down the road. Exactly, exactly. And and only in rugby can a Yank be successful coaching in Boston. There you go. Irony. There's your irony. Irony. Irony, the word of the day. Uh, but what was what was some of the things that surprised you the most about your own team in that game. Yeah, the, you know, the, the boys did a great job of, um, of being patient, kind of sticking to the script, um, you know, flipping that field over. We, we, were ha- you know, we were happy with what we got in defense. Uh, Rooney's, you know, Rooney's probably the, the, 
the best mauling team in the league. Uh, they, they got one in on us, uh, the, you know, mid, midway through the second half, and we really did a good job of adjusting late in that half to their mauling and in the second half as well. So it was a real hats off to to the forwards. Um, and then we had a good run in the, in the scrum as well. Um, so there's kind of some of the stuff we laid out were, were targets for us to stop for uh, from New York. You've had to mesh some new faces. I know this is your first time in the league, but you guys had a full exhibition season. I was there for, for all of it. The Carrot Cup matches were excellent. You guys proved that you were an organization that was going to be one that had to be dealt with by the opposition. It wasn't going to be a cakewalk. And here you are proving all the pundits wrong, winning that game. The, the, there was the rumor that you guys spending that week together in the woods was a, was a team bonding thing, but apparently it really was. Yeah, it was it, with so many new faces and um, new faces from very, very different places and different cultures. Uh, it was important to kind of get everyone comfortable with each other uh, before we started installing systems and talking rugby or any of that stuff. So, you know, hats off to our management team for, for putting together a pretty challenging uh, team building week up, up in the woods. It was really uh, a lot of it was challenging. A lot of it was kind of make, making yourself vulnerable in front of your teammates and, and uh other staff members, and I think it did a great job for us. How, how do you keep the guys engaged out there, and what's the training schedule like? You know, honestly, our guys are very professional. They understand they understand what the job is. Um, you know, they, they had a good night Sunday, and then they were, we were right back to right back to work onto Utah and kind of reviewing our match against New York today. We had a, a bit of a run at ten o'clock. The boys are over at UNLV now for a quick lift, and that that will be the schedule again tomorrow as well. A day off. On Thursday, captains run in, in, in a bit of a bit of a gym session on Friday. Then we're into Utah on Saturday. Same old, same old week. It's just in a different place. Maybe even a little bit easier for us, right? Everybody's in the same place rather than picking guys up in the vans and dealing with the cold and playing inside a bubble. I think the boys were a bit relieved to kind of be away from that that uh, environment. How banged up are you guys? Because Rooney's pretty banged up. It's going to happen, right? Week to week, I think the average you, you're looking to lose like. Uh, 1.7 players per week uh, was, a, was a number we came up with from last year. A leader's going to be out. He's got a concussion. Um, and we got a couple guys that are banged up. But I think that'd probably be the only the only injury we, we see going into next week. Guys are sore. The, the surface at Sam Boyd is pretty uh, is pretty hard. Catherine Henry on medicals done an outstanding job with them the last day and a half, kind of gluing guys back together. So Is the turf giving the guys rug burn, or is it just a hard surface to fall on? Yeah, it's it, the surface is really hot. If you think about the, the ball that bounced off the, the crossbar, that thing that was the third bounce that that hit off the ground. The thing yeah. hit, went as high as the crossbar, uh, so that gives you a good idea at how how how, how hard the surface is. It's like uh, three Texas leaguers in a row there over Denny Doyle's head. Yeah, <laughs> oh, Denny Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, look, Coach. Uh, if ever I was going to be wrong, I'd like to be wrong for you and your organization. Class organization, class guys, straight through. So best of luck. Uh, but I am eating crow down here, and hats off to you, sir. Okay, fair enough, Matt. Hey, can we can we keep that hat on till uh, till the Free Jacks have a loss? Can we get that deal? You know, we could talk about something under the table off camera. How you doing? You know what I mean? It's uh, I've proven that I am I am somebody that can be bought. Okay, let's talk. Mr. Josh Smith, the head coach of the winning New England Free Jacks. All right, if you thought that was cool, watch this. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle, on West 36th Street. And we are back, Matt McCarthy in Midtown Manhattan talking Major League Rugby. And that was Josh Smith, a pretty big hitter. But if you're going to follow him, you got to follow him with two megastars in the Major League Rugby space. None other than Brian Ray out of Halifax, Nova Scotia, who happens to be in Sin City. We thought he was lost. We thought he was like searching out whale blubber for the candles and everything else. But there he is, happy as a clam because it's not freezing out in Las Vegas. Brian, welcome. Yeah, it's good to be here. I thought it was in witness protection, but you seem to have tracked me down somehow. Funny how it works that they get witness protection in Vegas. And a man that knows all about that, Mr. Daniel Power. Daniel, welcome. Yeah, thanks for using my alias, Matt, so that witness protection keeps up. Brian, good to see you and happy to be the second 
uh, best looking hoser on the show behind you now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we we are. I know that your time is precious out there. Brian's got to get back to the crap tables, and Dan, you have to get back to that closet that's behind you. It's filled with memories, and we're going to get to them right now. Free Jacks and Rugby United New York in Las Vegas. Brian. Uh, I was stunned, frankly. Uh, New York just didn't show up. And uh, the Free Jacks, they really look sharp. Uh, I thought they were excellent. Bowdy and Waka, what a debut. I think I called that one. And uh, I just thought that uh, Rooney looked really, really flat. They, From start to finish, they just never really got anything going. So, uh, yeah, credit to the Free Jacks for uh, turning it up in that one. Yeah. Making us all look bad. Yeah, they did make us all look bad. We all picked against New England, and we, we now know that that is a pretty impressive team. You know, they kind of reminded me of your arrows in their cohesiveness and, you know, different guys taking on different tasks at different times and doing performing well. But Dan, holy wind gusts, Batman. How about the, the wind and the turf combining to completely work against Rooney in the early stages of that match? Yeah, I think everyone's seen that crazy try at this point, Matt, with the uh, bounce of the ball hitting the crossbar, coming back for the free jacks for the try. And just to echo Brian's point, the cohesiveness of a unit up there, you saw in the preseason they went to a, a getaway to do renovations on uh, Alex Magleby's chalet up in the upstate area. So it must have worked wonders. They look great. They played the conditions much better than Rooney. And, uh, you know, uh, kudos to the Free Jacks. What a start for them. It's more of an estate than a chalet. It's a chalet it, chalet on an estate? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a separate part off the estate on the, the northwest corner. To the right of the moat, right? Just to the right yeah. of the Yeah. Okay. Still waiting for the invite, Mags, by the way. <laughs> Anytime you want to bring me and Matt up, it'd be appreciated. I think we pretty much just ensured that we're not going to get an invite anytime soon with that kind of commentary. Moving along, the Houston Sabercats hosting the Colorado Raptors. Dano, you were there. Yeah, it was a nice way to start the year for Houston after the last two years have been a bit slow out of the blocks. They finished great last year, but uh, question marks over the Raptors scrum coming into the game. Um, we answered pretty early on that it hasn't improved to the point where it needs to be, and Houston hasn't slipped as much as we thought with a couple of players in Jamie Deaver and Paul Mullen jetting out to the West Coast. So super impressed with Houston in this one, especially at the set piece. Uh, I don't think it's time to you know, hit the panic button in Colorado. You've got some good pieces of puzzle there. But uh, that set piece is still a worrying sign uh, in Colorado, mate. Yeah, I agree with you on not hitting the panic button in Rugby Town USA because they've got some talent. They've got to mesh that talent. And I think going forward, they're going to still be a force. But hats off to Houston. Brian, what was your take on that? Yeah, I agree with all of that. Uh, they had Randy Ranger on the bench, so obviously he'll uh, shoot into the starting line pretty soon. Uh, Digby Ioani still to come. You know, you, you kind of have to question their recruitment in the offseason, uh, you know, picking up a lot of some good backs there, but they kind of ignored the, the scrum. They didn't really sort that out. That was a problem last year. They didn't fix that. Uh, so we'll see. And they've lost Hanko Hermesheis now, apparently, too. He's left the team after a contract dispute. So uh, I, I didn't think they looked very good. They got their work cut out for them. But uh, good show from Houston. Uh, some tougher games ahead from them, though. That Honko Hermesheis situation is something that we're going we're to have to keep our eye on league-wide. He is a huge part of this league. But the biggest thing for me was learning But Zach Pangelinen was on the Guam national soccer team. Yeah. If you ever get the chance, Matt, when he comes out and they play against New York, just show, ask him to show you some of the, the skills. He's still got them. All right. Let's go to Old Glory Nola. Brian. Yeah, complete domination for NOLA, I'm afraid, in their new uh, venue, by the way, which looks great. Uh, a recurring theme this weekend, the scrum, NOLA scrum, absolutely obliterated uh, Old Glory in that one. Uh, Matt Harmon beefed up this year, playing loose head prop, looked really good. Uh, and Cam Dolan, uh, what a game, the hat trick, he came you know, within inches of a couple more. Moni Tonga, we on playing six, I thought, had a, an awesome game. You know, uh, I just thought NOLA looked really good, and uh, Old Glory, um, they just looked shell-shocked. They were just blasted, blown off the park. And Dan, one of Nolan Nate Osborne's stamps on this team is the versatility. They had players dropping. They were without J.P. Eloff and Feeks before the, the start of the match, some of their key offensive weapons. And yet, and they also lost Younger, uh, the scrum half. But Scott Gale stepped in seamlessly. He's got a background, one, one of your Aussie boys, and Con Foley. They've, 
they've got guys that are just moving all around interchangeably, and it didn't seem like they missed a beat. They're going to be pretty dangerous when they get healthy. Yeah, that's going to be a great spine to watch in Gale, Foley, and Coleman, all three Australian Sevens guys, know each other really well, playing the Nate Osborne system really, really well. But like Brian said, Old Glory only won 40% of their scrums, their own scrum. But the Beast was walking through the airport, so Visa approved on his way to DC. And if there's anyone who can make a difference immediately, it's going to be the Beast. We saw, we'll talk about Manon a little later, but this guy is going to turn that entire team on its head. And I'm super excited to watch what he can do down there. Next up, Utah versus Atlanta. Dano, why don't you start us with this one? What a start again for Utah. I picked Utah to win. I'm a glutton for punishment with Utah because so much talent, so much potential. I thought Chris Latham would really get them firing. Uh, but Atlanta, stronger in that second half. Played much smarter rugby down the, the run and come away with a nine-point win. My colleague Pete Steinberg is very, very high on them making the top three. He's got that history with Scott Lawrence, who is the second American coach to win his Major League Rugby debut. But... Utah, they are no longer a 60-minute team. They were a 55-minute team. Yeah, uh, ATL grew into the game, but Utah really shut it down. They had that n- nice lead, but then 55-minute mark, uh, they're on their, their their heels there. Saya Uhila gets uh, sent to the bin, and after that, it was just gone. Like, they had nothing left in the final quarter. Uh, I think it was five, four or five uh, subs left on the bench for Utah, so maybe some concerns about depth there uh, for, for Chris Latham, but... Uh, yeah, they just fell apart, you know, and, and I think a month ago he was on a show commenting about how they needed some uh, some extra work and fitness, so they might still uh, need to sort that out, maybe a bit of, uh, you know, mental toughness as well. Uh, but uh, disappointing for Utah, great start for ATL. And Ross Deacon really anchoring that pack at number eight, a good pickup for Atlanta. Moving along, two-time champion Seattle Seawolves visiting San Diego for a rematch of the final, Daniel. Yep, this was a good game. Fending champs. Got out to a good start, didn't they? They looked good again. Ricard Hutting scored a try, and Ma Nonu was found you know, two times in a row there defensively and as he worked his way into the game. But let me tell you, Ma Nonu, you don't get 100 caps for the All Black being a, being a bum, and that he is not. He took that game by the scruff of the neck, and some of those passes were just unbelievable. I think one he threw out to Mikey Taya, the pass was almost so good, Mikey Taya didn't even know what to do with it. And uh, But... He's going to get better and better at 37. Uh, it's crazy to think what he can do, not only on the field, but for that side, off the field, the culture and everything. I'm, I'm so excited for San Diego. And they'll bring some more players into the fold as well. Speaking of more players, where was where was Joe Peterson? There was a couple of big left-handers off the coast there. Um, so he went <laughs> surfing instead. So he's got the, the rip curl endorsement that he's keeping up and waxed the board and said, you know, I'm going to surf today instead. No, I think it's just a, a slowly, slowly for Joe. It's a long year and he has more than earned that right to work his way back into the side. But Dana, what about the sliding pivot situation? Oh, the sliding. Yeah, of course. So Joe Peterson, uh, you've obviously got Burton there now and two fly halves. So I think they're going to use that on either side of the field. So left and right playing uh, first receiver, second receiver, and just rotating those between the two. Going to be dangerous. Going to be tough to defend as well. New look for Major League Rugby. So it would be interesting how those West Coast teams adapt to that. Brian, Lou Stanfill, wearing number 19, played with the energy of a 19-year-old. And at like the 52-minute mark, two minute mark, I want to say, he, he, he he's involved. He gets the ball. He crashes into Tim Metcher. Metcher tackles him. As he's getting up, Metcher's going back to the play. Lou shoves him. You got to love Sweet Lou. You know, we've had him here when I've been with you on the show as well, Sweet Lou. Uh, and what a guy to have on that team. You know, the, all these other uh, huge stars coming in, uh, Upe- Nanu Peterson, etc. And then you got uh, Sweet Lou, like the, the All-American, the uh, <laughs> guy, you know, just the warrior in there. And, you know, they've got other guys. We didn't see Ben Mitchell playing for them yet. He's still to come in. He's one of the, the best locks in MLR last year. So uh, what a team. And, uh, you know, I, I will agree uh, complete with Dan. This was easily the best game of the weekend. Really exciting. Uh, you know, Seattle just kind of faded a little in the middle. It came back at the end. But uh, cracking game. And, and San Diego, they, they got the leg up. And I, I would say they're now the, uh, after week one, the instant favorites uh, to go on and uh, challenge for that shield again this year. 
And just finally, he's on the all hair team, the rugby wrap up all hair team, Billy Tolatau. But you got to keep your cool, my friend. It was the waning moments. It looked like uh, Seattle was going to come back and steal another dramatic victory in San Diego. His lineout doesn't go in straight, and then he takes a yellow card, smashing in with his elbow. You got to keep your cool there, Dano. Yeah, Billy's a young guy, and he brings a lot of passion and enthusiasm to the Seawolves, and you could tell they don't lose very often. So it was unfamiliar territory for him, but it was uh, it was costly. And I'm sure Ricard and Brad Tucker, Tim Metcher, those guys will grab him during the week and have a chat to him about that and probably won't see it again. I think they'll get there, but I think the next game we're going to talk about, Matt, is my other team that's going to go to the championship so and i think that'll make brian ray very happy who it is i think he's talking about the toronto arrows ladies and gentlemen and they were playing against the austin gilgronis and you know what we've been making light of this name this team that was pulseless that was left for dead that was moribund and now we're all talking about them they've moved into a new facility they've got new uniforms granted the names were peeling off the jerseys in the in the first minute and a half but it's all good great facility with grass and some money and some life in this organization, and we're all talking about it. Yeah, that's right. Bit of a marketing gimmick. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of all that, but I like, I love the stuff, the other stuff that they're doing, and those those silly numbers in the front of the jerseys. But uh, I've, I'm I'm taking a lot of pleasure in seeing the arrows pack uh, man shame the uh, the gronies or whatever they are uh, in that game. Uh, just complete domination. Uh, what a scrum, you know. Shepard, uh, Manuel Diana, the new number eight from uh, Uruguay, had a great start to his game. Robbed of a second try thanks to uh, Lex Wainer going in for the penalty try instead. But hey, uh, Tommy De La Vega on the flank, Gaston Mierda set in the back. What a game! Uh, great start for the arrows, you know. And honestly, I think they probably could have put more points on the board if it wasn't slick out there and they're a little more accurate. So ominous signs for the rest of the league. Dan, the, the international pickups for Toronto are excellent. You know, some of the other teams might, you know, it's, it's a crab shoot, New York with Bassero, but they're on, they're spot on specifically in that back line. You've got at least two out of the three starters able to kick on counterattacks, which is not really par for the course for a lot of teams in this league. Yeah, I agree with you 100%, Matt. And a lot of teams all talk culture now, like we want this culture, that culture, and, and thanks a lot to the All Blacks for you know putting that into the, into the world of rugby. Everyone, Brian said, I agree with 100%, but Richie Asiata, if the Arrows can shape things a little bit more to his strengths, wow, I, t- I really do think they're going to be in the championship. I think after the weekend, uh, San Diego, Seattle, still out of the West to, to decide that one. Yeah, I had the opportunity to speak to him in Kettles, Kettles Corner up in Orchard Park in Buffalo, outside the Buffalo Bills uh, bubble after they scrimmaged against Rooney. Nice guy. Just blends right into that whole organization, Brian. But guys, we are basically out of time on this segment, but don't go away, folks, because we're, the three of us are coming back with what's coming up next. Stay tuned been blind since I was four and I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label none of that stuff influences me I drink beer because of the taste and my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon it has the taste and the flavor what do you think is on the label I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn jumping over fire That's good beer. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. And before we get to our heavy hitters, Mr. Dan Power and Mr. Brian Ray, we have Colby Marshall in the studio, and he's got a special segment. Yeah, Matt, I got three things I want to talk about. One is Player of the Weekend, and that's Cam Dolan out of New Orleans. Cam's a Life University alumni, had a hat trick on the weekend, and definitely was a big part of the blowout win that New Orleans had. Two, a player to watch moving forward, and that's Ma Nanu coming out of San Diego Legion. He didn't get on the score sheet, but he had a lot of nice plays that led to some tries for the team and was a big impact on them winning as well. And number three, a player that stood out in a loss, and that's Kyle Assumption from Rooney. Kyle had two tries and played a very physical game for the Roosters, but obviously Rooney didn't get the win. However, it's nice to see that Kyle you know, put in a nice performance in the match. Thank you, Colby. Now get the heck out of the studio. Gentlemen. Brian and Dan, we've got another great weekend of Major League Rugby, beginning 
with the matches in Las Vegas. You have the Free Jacks of New England playing against the Utah Warriors out of the Salt Lake City area. Dan. Well, after the weekend, and Vegas is a happy hunting ground, I've got to fancy the Free Jacks in this one until I see something different from the Warriors. It's going to be tough to go with the side that, uh, as we saw on the weekend, can't play a full 80 just yet. I agree with you there. Brian, how about your thoughts? Yeah, agreed. Uh, you know, Free Jacks don't have to travel. They can kind of hang out this week, rest up after that uh, beatdown uh, that, that the turf gave them. Uh, I expect Guillemin will probably step in and fly half. He's got lots of experience, so I'm going to go with Free Jacks as well. The Austin Gilgronies versus Rugby United New York. Brian. I'm uh, interested to see what side, kind of a side uh, New York could put out, but, uh, you know, picked them last week again. They don't have to travel this week, so I'm going to go with them over Austin. I don't think any of uh, Austin's big guns have arrived just yet, so, uh, yeah, we'll go with Rooney. Gil Groney's right now. There you oh, go, oh. just for the— just- just because I like saying the name. All right. Okay. I, I am going to go with Rugby United New York. I think they're going to uh, regroup. This is the perfect medicine playing against the Gilgronies at this stage. Not that the Gilgronies won't be a force going down the road or can, uh, can be a more competitive side, but I'm going with Rooney in this one. Houston at Toronto in Vegas. Yeah, I'm impressed with uh, what the Sabercats did in week one. But uh, my apologies to Paul Healy, but I'm going to have to go with uh, my arrows in this one. They're just a, a step up uh, from what we saw from the Raptors last week. Yeah, I'm going to say the arrows are on target in this one. How about you, Dan? I agree with both of you there. Sabercats weren't perfect against Colorado, and they have some work to do, but Toronto will not. Let them get off the hook the way Colorado did on the weekend. I'll go the arrows by plenty in this one. Colorado. At the Legion. Nanu versus Ranger? Can we see that? That'd be a heck of a collision. Uh, Got to go with San Diego in this one. Uh, heavy favorites. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, Dano. Yeah, 100%. Until that scrum gets fixed up and it's not going to happen overnight, it's hard to pick the Raptors, unfortunately. Legion look great. They'll back it up in Vegas. And guys, we do have more action outside of Las Vegas, believe it or not. We have the Seattle Seawolves versus Washington. Old Glory's first match. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Brian. Yeah, defending champions a little bit disappointed with their uh, performance last weekend, but uh, it was okay, but I expect them to bounce back pretty quickly. Uh, Old Glory didn't look great against NOLA, so I'm going to go with Seattle in this one. Again, I'm going to go with Seattle because, like I did with San Diego, A, uh, they are the returning champions. B, I don't want Adrian Balfour in my face. So I'm I'm going with you guys against Seattle. Tendai Matawira, the beast shows up. you got a ball game on your hands. If he can play this weekend... It's going to be a really good game. If he doesn't, yeah, again, what NOLA did to their scrum, Seattle will do that tenfold. So Seawolves to bounce back. NOLA, they are hosting Atlanta. Brian. Looking forward to this one. Should be lots of uh, really expansive rugby from both sides. Uh, I'm going to go with NOLA at home. I thought they looked brilliant last weekend, so uh, I think they'll go again. ATL, uh, they'll put up a fight, but I'm going to go with NOLA. Yeah, I'll be calling this one, Matt, CBS Sports Game of the Week. So I'll be down there doing this one. I think New Orleans, uh, Goldmine on the Shrine will continue their, their their blessed run, their golden run. They'll get the win there against ATL. Do you have any intel on the injuries to Elof and Fix and how long they may or may not be out? Yeah, JP, uh, probably a couple of weeks. Um, picked up a little knock. It's going to take some time to heal. Uh, don't have anything on Fixie, but... He's a tough rooster, so he will be back sooner rather than uh, later, I would imagine. But JP, for NOLA fans, probably another four to six weeks. Feeks is a visa. Feeks is a visa, says the man sipping ice in a cup. Is that what's going on over there? i got to keep uh, refreshed out here in the, the Vegas desert. <laughs> Beautiful. And just to clarify, folks, Dan was not alluding to Feeks being a rooster on the Roonies, he was just saying in literal terms he was uh, he's tough as a rooster. And on that note, on behalf of Mr. Dan Power and Mr. Brian Ray, Matt McCarthy in Midtown Manhattan for Rugby Wrap-Up, signing off. <laughs>